of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and a very warm welcome to Mass wherever and whenever you're watching this Mass. Uh, you're very, very welcome here to St. Martin's in Trenent. This is the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We continue the same theme as last week. The theme is healing. The focus today is on that terrible disease that's still with us in the world, the disease of leprosy. And a reminder to us that in Jesus' time in particular, but may throughout many of the ages of human life, leprosy has been something that has been so fearful that the leper has become an outcast, put out of the town, out of the village, to live alone and separate. We do that to one another, don't we? We can push people away. We can make them outcasts and strangers who were once friends. We do that to God. Our sins push him away, and yet he's always welcoming us back. So let us enter into the love of the Lord again to seek his mercy and to seek his healing. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The 
This first reading is a reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a man's skin, a case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. The man must be taken to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests who are his sons. The man is leprous, he is unclean. The priest must declare him unclean. He is suffering from leprosy of the head. A man infected with leprosy must wear his clothing torn and his hair disordered. He must shield his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, he must be unclean. And therefore he must live apart. He must live outside the camp. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Happy the man whose offense is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. O happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. But now I acknowledge my sins. My guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my offence to the Lord, and you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Exalt, you just. O come, ring out your joy, all you upright of heart. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of your mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said, be cured. And the leprosy left him at once and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. The very first thing you should notice about that passage is that the leper healed is able to enter into the town. He takes part in community life again and he's telling everybody what's happened to him. The leper has been made whole. The leper is welcomed into community. But look what Mark has done. Jesus now is pushed out of the town. People are coming to him all the time, so he's the one who can no longer openly go into the town. He's now on the outside. A reversal. And of course, Mark is already hinting to us that Jesus will be the outsider that Jesus will die outside of the city wall in the Gehenna. He will go and, and, and die in the rubbish heaps where they'd crucified people. Jesus becomes the leper. And of course, that's part of the great mystery of Christianity is that Jesus takes on the leprosy of our sin. Um, if you're on YouTube, I, I would really quite like you to go and look at the introduction to this mass on the YouTube because it gives you something of the flavor of this. I will say there that um, 
St. Francis, who famously encounters the leper. Francis, before he's a saint, is a boy about town, very fastidious, and he sees the leper, and his first instinct is to get out of the way. His second instinct is to throw him some coins, and his third instinct, the moment of conversion, is when he embraces the leper. And, of course, the leper is Christ. But that's also a story, a parable to us, because the leper is always Christ. The outcast is always Christ. The person outside of the wall, outside of the community, is always Christ. No matter where you find them, that's where Christ is. And then I've maybe said to you before that as I was a small child, maybe primary six, I think, I came across a a series of booklets of heroes. It wasn't even Heroes of the Face. It wasn't even a Catholic booklet. But it was about Damien of Molokai. He was just at that point Father Damien. And I remember even then, and to this day, being profoundly influenced by Damien going and living in the leper island of Molokai, eventually, of course, contracting leprosy himself. And famously, he begins the sermon after he's been diagnosed with leprosy. His first words in his first sermon afterwards is, we lepers. And for Damien, it was the association. He'd become one with the people he served. And in that, of course, again, he saw that parable of the Lord coming to be with us and coming to bear our sins, to identify with our brokenness, not just with our goodness and love. You'll also see a story of uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Uh, In the 1950s, Archbishop Fulton Sheen was a superstar. He had an American television program where he would stand there in full pontificals. He would look completely like a bishop, uh, and he would teach, and he was a brilliant teacher, great teacher of the faith, the traditional faith. And so he was a great teacher of the faith before the Second Vatican Council. And you'll see a story there about him visiting a leper colony, and again, it's worth reading. But Fulton Sheen, who was a superstar before the council, fell out of favor with the leaders of the American church. And although he was an archbishop, he was marginalized for the rest of his ministry. That's the trouble, eh? That's the trouble when you no longer have a compassionate heart, but an ideological heart, whether you have the ideology of the right or the ideology of the left, then that excludes others. You're so convinced of the truth that you have that you can't hear or listen to truth anywhere else. And that's an ideology, a Catholic ideology of the left or a Catholic ideology of the right. And we've caught up with that at the moment, America in particular, but here in this diocese, we're caught up with that polarization. I'm not a traditionalist in any real sense, um, but I've often gone to Fulton Sheen and listened to him because he articulates something of the very essential truth of the Catholic faith. And yet, for most of his life after the Second Vatican Council, although an archbishop, he was definitely in the margins. Hard to think of an archbishop on the margins. Uh, But if you've been a television superstar and suddenly you're a nobody, you're on the margins. So he himself became a leper. So just before he died, famous moment you'll see on YouTube of John Paul II visiting and uh, one of the visiting the United States, a great gathering of bishops, and John Paul goes wandering to find him, to find Fulton Sheen, and to embrace him. Of course, now he's on the road to canonization, and it was in part because. A compassionate heart, and you'll see that in the story of Fulton Sheen and the leper, recognizing his own self and his brokenness. But for all of the saints, there has to be that moment of suffering. No saint ever goes to glory completely surrounded by glory. Every saint embraces the cross. Every saint has to embrace the leper at some point, to be associated with the leper. If you're a left-wing Catholic, and all you have is ideology, then the faith hasn't reached your heart. If you're a right-wing Catholic, and all you have is ideology, then the faith hasn't reached your heart. And of course, often, it's a moment of conversion, a moment 
that you actually recognize the Lord Jesus present. And where is Jesus always to be found? Always, always, always. Yes, in the Blessed Sacrament. Every one of the saints will speak of Jesus really present in the Blessed Sacrament. And that's one of the reasons why we're suffering at this moment in time, because we Catholics are so convinced of Jesus' presence. And it is a real loss not to be able to receive him. And although we will say he's in many other places, and that the Blessed Sacrament, although essential, is not necessary, it's a strange contradiction. Nonetheless, if you want to really find him again, a real presence of Christ. And there we are, the leper, the outcast, the person that society has rejected. He's there, really there. And that's why all of these stories, conversion stories, is when the saints' eyes are opened and they recognize Christ. Well, if it's good enough for the saints, if they need their eyes to be opened, then surely we do as well. We need to recognize. And that's why there's only one way that we can finally push Christ out of our lives. It's when we push others away. It's when we're indifferent to others. It's when we're indifferent to the suffering of others. It's when we push others away. We're no longer talking to them. We ostracize them. We send them to Coventry. We make them lepers in our lives. They are dead to us. In that, we push the Lord away. And it's very difficult to get him back in again. Because we know when we really get him back in, what will he do? He will tell us we have to go to the person ostracized. We have to go to the poor, to the leper, to the outcast. That's why repentance is so difficult. Because genuine repentance challenges who we are. And the purpose of Lent is to set aside a whole 40 days to challenge who we are, our assumptions, whatever those assumptions are. Because the Lord, whoever we are, will come along and stand beside us and challenge us. But if we are the leper, he will embrace us. And that's why the beginnings of Lent, we always admit and acknowledge that we ourselves are in some way outcast. Now I've waited on for much longer than I intended, so we'll go straight on to the bidding prayers. And so my friends, let us rejoice in God's faithfulness as we bring forward our intentions. For all who gather with us to worship this Sunday, that their lives may be lived for God's glory throughout the week. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who suffer from COVID-19, that medical advances may soon rid the world of this terrible disease. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For outcasts and people shunned by neighbors, that they may experience the compassion from the followers of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who suffer because of addiction, that they may have the divine gifts of courage and new hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died, that they may share the salvation won by Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I offer this Mass in particular for the repose of the soul of Lillian Conley, who died recently. I ask for your prayers also for Mary McElroy from Trinent, who died recently, a resident in St Anne's Care Home in Musselburgh. Pray for all our faithful departed. Praying for each and commending them to the prayers of St Martin, prayers of St. Damien and St. Francis, the prayers of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Faithful God, we rejoice in the mercy you show your people. Hear our prayers, that we may always give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honour of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For, having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon us like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever 
and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May Christ's peace go from this altar into your lives, your hearts, your homes, your families. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And so before I receive communion, we'll make an act of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Although you have already come, I embrace you. I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. So let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. And just before I finish Mass, just to remind you, of course, that Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday coming. Mass will be broadcast. Uh, the tradition, of course, is to take palms and to burn them, and these then become the ashes that would be used in our heads, and we're not able to gather for Ash Wednesday. Uh, so if you're able to watch this, you should have received, or you will receive, um, a little set of the readings for the Mass. It will be recorded and then available. And my suggestion to you is this, uh, that you may either safely burn one of these and then use that ash, um, or simply make the sign of the cross, 
So at the time when the ashes are blessed and I make the sign of the cross, a father Kieran makes the sign of the cross on his forehead, at that point you would do the same. And again, it's that idea that remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. Uh, the, the, the ashes is the outward sign of that. It's the heart that needs to change. Uh, and although that we are dust, and yes, and to the soil of the earth we will return, yet we are infinitely precious to God who died on the cross for us. So in some ways, it's simply the making of the sign of the cross that's the most important thing, because that's the reminder of God's love, as opposed to reminding ourselves of our frailties, but they come together. So, either just simply make the sign of the cross on your forehead, as the priest would, or burn a, a palm cross, if you've got one still, uh, and use that. Uh, Stations of the Cross will also be uh, broadcast on YouTube on uh, Pam, uh, on Ash Wednesday and then that will be available to us in different ways. If you've got a newsletter or can see a newsletter, uh, that will outline those things to you. Um, I'm doing a little uh, Zoom Lent reflection on the way of the cross, on gathering some of the stations and looking at their meanings a little bit more deeply. Again, it will only last 40 minutes, so if you come in at 7.30, you will be out by 10 past 8, because the thing will cut off at 10 past 8, so that's always a safety thing. Ash Wednesday, a time of repentance. Well, on Friday, uh, we celebrate the World Day in the Catholic Church for those who've suffered abuse. Time for repentance, a time for the Church to beat its breast and say it failed and it failed because it put the institution before the person uh, and whenever we put the institution before the person we fail the person that's why it has to be a heart thing and never a head thing so I'm just going to say a prayer if you've got a newsletter use that prayer on Friday but I'll use it now Father whose mercy has been revealed in the tenderness of your son Jesus Christ who said to his disciples suffer the little children to come unto me May your church be a secure home where all your children are brought closer to him. May all those who have been abused be respected and compassionately accompanied, thereby receiving healing and restored dignity by the balm of your grace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's go forth. This Mass is ended, and thanks be to God. I needed a neighbour, were you there, were you there, when I needed a neighbour, were you there? Thank you.